Hello friends, this video on is matter around us pure part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's see how can we obtain gas from the air. Air we know has oxygen, has nitrogen, has argon, has other gas also. So we talk about the composition. Oxygen is almost 21.9% by volume. Nitrogen is almost 78.1% by volume. Argon is 0.9% by volume and another is only 0.1%. These are by volume. And we have to separate them. To separate this, we, knew, we know that we need some physical property. So let's see the boiling point. Nitrogen, the boiling point is 77 Kelvin. Argon is 87 Kelvin, almost. Oxygen is almost 90 Kelvin. And, ca and carbon dioxide, other will ignore. Let's try to focus on oxygen and nitrogen itself. So if you see, there's a difference in the point of almost 13 Kelvin. And the 13 Kelvin is actually less than 25 Kelvin. So we have to use some fractional distillation here. right? So, but we know that at least there is a difference in the boiling point. And we know that air is nothing but homogeneous mixture. Okay. Homogeneous mixture. It's a colloidal actually of oxygen, nitrogen, argon and other gas. And these have different boiling point. So we can actually, dip, and the difference in the boiling point is less than 13 degrees Celsius in this case. So we can actually separate them by fractional distillation. Okay. So what we can do here is, we can actually take air, we'll compress it by applying pressure and also cool down. When you cool it and when you compress it, you get liquid air. Correct? To liquefy something, either you increase the pressure or decrease temperature. Here we are doing both. Once we get this, what we do is we warm slowly in the fractional distillation. And with this, when you warm slowly, the gas separates out at different height because they have different uh, boiling point. So if you see nitrogen has a minimum boiling point 77 Kelvin. It will evaporate first. Okay. And it will be, for example, if you see here, this is air under high pressure and cool temperature. What we are doing is we are getting a liquid, liquid air, right? This is the normal air we are putting, it is the normal air. We are putting the filter also to make sure that all the particles are, suspended particles are gone. And then under high pressure and under cold condition, we are making it almost liquid. Okay. Now, once we have the liquid here, here, now we have liquid here. Now we start slowly start warming here. So if you see here, this side is more hot. This side is cold. This area is 77 Kelvin temperature. This is 90 Kelvin temperature. Don't increase temperature very high, but this is this range. So the, the moment here, the liquid air comes out, right, through an expansion jet because it's all liquid here. This, this, till this part, we have all liquid. Now the liquid air comes out and we have, we reach this temperature of 77 K. What will happen? The moment you have 77 K, the gas will come out. And which gas will come out? Nitrogen gas will go. And the gas you will fit from some pipe here and you will collect nitrogen gas. Okay. Okay. And then argon also has a low temperature, we will get some argon also. Now, the remaining gas will come here. The liquid, it is still in liquid form. The one the gas we have collected as nitrogen. The, the remaining liquid will come here and that will be the liquid oxygen because oxygen is again uh, almost 90 Kelvin temperature. So we will collect most of the nitrogen, almost 70% nitrogen will be collected here and remaining will come here and that will be liquid oxygen. So if you see here, this is the main point and please note the temperature is different here. Here you, we maintain the temperature of 77K. If you maintain the temperature of 77K, not more than that because if we make it 90K, here oxygen is also evaporate and will be collected in this tank. So, but this is actually fitted to a tank and in this tank we want to collect only oxygen, right? So what we do is we make sure the temperature is 77K here. So with that only oxygen gets evaporated here. 
because oxygen has the boiling point of 77 and we collect the oxygen the remaining liquid air is passed on here and the remaining liquid air typically has more oxygen so only the nitrogen is collected here hope you understood the flow so let me explain this once again so here we have liquid air and this part which you see actually is connected to a tank and this is nitrogen this is a liquid air this is a liquid now when you maintain the temperature of 17 and here by applying some heat maintain this temperature the moment liquid air is heated to 77 kelvin in liquid air nitrogen has the boiling point of 77 k oxygen has 90 k so nitrogen will convert into gas and this nitrogen will be converted into gas cooled down and collected here the remaining liquid uh, air will be will go here because of the flow because it is a flow it will be collected here as liquid oxygen okay the next is we will try to purify copper sulfate sample okay so in this case there is a copper sulfate sample this is a copper sulfate sample and this is impure we have to purify it how can we do this it has some impurities we don't know the quality of impurities so what we can do is we can actually dissolve this copper sulfate solution into water okay some minimum amount, amount of water that is required and we can actually filter out some impurities the big big stone particles actually can filter out once that is done let it dissolve you actually dissolve the whole uh, copper sulfate solution and then you filter out you get this this solution and then you can filter this out with this filter paper so that some if there is some small or big stones particle here that you can actually filter out okay and then once that is done and then you again keep in this kind of jar and then you allow it to cool down if you allow it to cool down you filter out once you filter out right so if you see now if you filter out and then you actually allow it to cool down if you cool let it cool down there is no heat here if you cool down let it, allow, let it cool down then you'll see that it will become water will still be here but this will become transparent water and the copper sulfate crystals will get deposited here and this process is called crystallization okay so what we have done is so we have taken some copper sulfate and we have dissolved this in water solution and then we have filtered out some impurities the big big impurities all these big impurities you see are filtered out are filtered out here whatever we got here solution then we cool it down actually not it we will cool it down we will cool it down and then we will see that after some time the crystals of copper sulfate will come out okay same process actually whatever NaCl the common salt we get we eat that is also purified from the seawater seawater has a lot of salt and the same process is used to extract salt from the seawater let's see how we get the drinking water purified whatever water we get in the city actually is purified by the government and there's a whole big process for that so this is the impure water which we get from reservoir reservoir i'll say this is the impure water the first thing is done is this water is put into a sedimentation tank here water is allowed to settle down for some time maybe two three hours so here what happens is solid particles they get settled down right the solid particles get settled down here so we'll see here the solid particles get settled down here and that's why it's called sedimentation tank because sedimentation process is taking place here now this has is relatively pure water it goes from this tank to a tank called loading tank right so here we don't have sedimented impurities here we have water without sedimented in, in, uh, without sedimented impurities so i have relatively pure water but it will still have impurities in it which are fine impurities now this fine this sedimentation uh, this water is now again allowed to pass through a filtration tank so in this filtration tank we have sand we have gravel we have coarse stones so this sand is on the top layer then we have gravel uh, and then we have coarse stones 
So what these does is these are charged sand. Okay. So when water flows through it, these particles which are impurities they get attracted towards this sand particles. These impurities get attracted towards the sand particles and thus we get more pure water. So we see it has little impure water, it has more pure water by the time it flows through the filtration time because the impurities get attracted by this charged sand particles. So here we get little pure water. So once I get pure water, we actually do chlorination. So chlorination kills the bacteria. So we add some chlorine. So with that you get, you kill all the bacteria and then you get water. And this is the pure water for drinking. Okay, please note here, this uh, sand filters, they have charged particles, the charged particles attract the impurities from the water. So this is the typical process by which the impure water typically from the lake or from uh, uh, any water body a river is purified and you get that purified water in the home. Let's take some numerical now. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.